Hello guys, it is Modest Major here, bringing you some commentary over a Capture the Flag gameplay on Complex. The gameplay in the background is pretty goddamn awesome. I don't want to be big headed, but it goddamn is. I'm meant to be Modest Major, but I'm not doing a good job of being modest. But there you go, it's an alright gameplay, it's not a bad gameplay at all. Um, I'm splitting it into two parts, it's a 15 minute 40 second Capture the Flag gameplay. Um, it basically runs until sudden death and then goes over the time limit. It's the longest game I've, the longest good game I've ever had um, on any game for that matter, I would probably say. It just goes on for a long time and I managed to get a fairly, fairly nice score. I won't spoil the score until the end, but yeah, it's okay. Now, seeing as this is a two-part commentary, I thought this would be a good time to discuss a rather hot-button topic that is... Um, quite often talked about amongst the Halo community and is rather a contentious debate and that is whether Halo 4 is a good game. Is Halo 4 a good game? Is Halo 4 better than Reach? Does Halo 4 size up to its competitors in Halo 3, 2 and 1? Um, now that is very much a hot button topic within the Halo community. If you go on to Waypoint forums you will see nothing but uh, strongly worded arguments against Halo 4, why they despise the game with all of their soul, um, and a lot of people saying they don't think the game is as good as Reach, um, which, quite frankly, I find mind-blowing with the amount of hate that Reach received when it uh, came out, but you've got to understand, although Reach uh, may not have been as popular as Halo 1 or 2, 2 or 3, it did receive its own... Um, dedicated following you know reach had parts of the game it may have had parts of the game that i didn't personally agree with that a lot of people personally didn't agree with um but at the same time it did have its own vibe it had its own uh and i think that's what will happen with halo 4 as well i think halo 4 might not be as popular as the other games but there will be a lot of people that like what halo 4 offered us and didn't get annoyed at the problems didn't get as annoyed as other people do from the problems which is fair enough, um, and I would like to say before I follow this argument that I am one of those people, I'm one of the people who are in the dedicated Halo 4 following, Not, I wouldn't say dedicated, I wouldn't say I love the game and I know the flaws of the game, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Halo 4 is some majestical game uh, with no problems and it's the best Halo game, no, I, I don't think that and I, I probably don't even think it's as good as Halo 3 or Halo 2, but at the same time, I get a lot of enjoyment out of this game, and I feel like the problems um, within this game are the people. I feel like people are making mountains out of molehills um, in some respects. Some some respects I understand where people are coming from, such as ranking system, but some respects I feel like people are over exaggerating problems, um, especially from the Reach dedicated fan base. I feel like they're just they're not willing to overlook stuff that they would have been willing to overlook in Reach, and I don't even know why. Um, so, so let's get into it. Let's get into the the heat of the night. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but yeah, let's get into the main argument. Now, one of the first things that will come up is ranking system, and if someone said they didn't play Halo 4 due to the ranking system, I would understand that. I can I can get behind that argument, and to be honest, at one point I was kind of in that, you know, tent as well. Um, having no ranking system sucks. There's no way around it. Um, they say they're going to bring out CSR soon, um, which is going to be a, um, a Halo 4 specific ranking system, but that it's only going to be viewable on Waypoint. Now, I understand marketing. I understand that these companies want to make money and they're trying to generate traffic for the Waypoint app. But my argument in response to that would be, would you rather not generate traffic for your actual game than the actual Waypoint app? The Waypoint app probably doesn't generate a, a eighth of the cash that a ranking system would generate in bringing back people to the game. I know people, I know so many people who have gotten off this game because of a ranking system. I know so many people who have talked to me and said, I would go back on Halo 4. But I don't get a ranking system and I don't see the incentive of playing anymore. I just wish they did it. The amount of players who have said that to me is quite frankly ridiculous. Um, 
and I know so many players who would have considered playing, c- continued playing if there was a ranked playlist and a social playlist. For me right now, the an- main annoyance of this game is that there is just one big playlist and it has a true kill system, true skill system, so I am playing m- more hard and harder, harder and harder games with no incentive to do so. There's no crest next to my name, there's no badge next to my name saying, yo, you did well that game major. Here, have some ranking points. Here, here's a nice little picture of a bird for you. You know, that's what it was all about on Halo 3. You you got your brownie points for doing it. And I know a lot of Reach of the Reach player base would say, in response to that, would say, well, what about the boosters in Halo 3? Boosters in Halo 3 are a massively over-exaggerated issue. Yes, they were there. But can you honestly tell me that it was still easy to get a 50 in Lone Wolf, still easy to get a 50 in the MLG playlist? It wasn't even easy to get a 30 in the MLG playlist. Even in the even in the last days, you had to be a relatively decent player, at the very least, with a probably good team. It wasn't just like you got on there and you got against boosters every day. No, the boosters suck, and the boosters were gay people, and it was annoying that there was that way around the ranking system. But... It was a very small issue in comparison to what we got. What we got out of having the ranking system was much greater than what we lost from having a ranking system. Yeah, you got boosters, but at the end of the day, you got a system when 90% of the time, you knew that a player was fairly skillful if they were a brigadier, if they were a... Um, a, 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 a colonel, you knew that they had some skill at the game, you knew that they played for a long time, and you knew that they were going to be better than the average player. And that's what I loved about Halo, you you were able to categorise players, and yes, the system wasn't as refined as, say, something like StarCraft 3, but the system needed. And you're probably wondering why I have started off this argument with such hate towards the idea of a non-ranking system. I just want to show that I have a balanced opinion on the matter, going into the main core of the argument. And although I think that's a very, very bad thing, not having a ranking system, I don't feel like it's game-breaking. I just feel like it loses the incentive of being able to play for a long, long time, long stretches of time, which is a bad thing, but it's not game-breaking. I still take enjoyment out of the game, and I will explain my enjoyment out of the game much more in the second part. I hope you enjoyed watching this first part of the commentary. I have been Modest Major. Thank you for watching.